Welcome, golf fans, pursuers of knowledge in the almighty dollar. This is your golf guru bringing you the Fall Swing 2023 Shriners Children's Open. This is going to be the preview, DFS picks, and my favorite bet show. I've got a ton of information to cover and have a short time to do it. So bear with me. I'm just going to fly through the facts, and hopefully it still helps you get an edge on the DFS side and maybe some bets that you are interested in picking. Thank you for spending some time with me thanks for stopping by and i apologize for getting this out late i try to get these out on tuesday but it just has not allowed and i have a short time window today to get it out to you guys so let's get on with this all right so real quick let's just talk a little golf about what just transpired at the sanderson farms and i was a bit shocked uh, to say the least that mckenzie hughes actually won his second tournament it is not the kind of game that i was looking for uh, to win this thing right I, I was looking for great ball strikers that might have that putter that pops hence the sergio garcia the sebastian munoz win the cameron champ um but actually funny enough if you look at mckenzie hughes what he does very well is putt so really if you take from the green back to the tee uh it, as how his game is from you know from his best assets is the putter and then chipping and then irons are bad typically and off the tee is a disaster so uh, good for him. He did enough ball striking to win this thing. Of course, you had Seb Straka, which I mentioned, um, you know, has out of nowhere kind of found his game again since the win at the Honda. Had a ton of missed cuts, hit the FedEx Cup, and actually started to play very well. It transpired. It really wasn't on him either. Uh, the guys that I, you know, had bets or was on, of course, like Garrett Higo, another 500 to 1, uh, almost pulled it out, and that would have been awesome. I didn't have a ton of money on him, but I had a little bit, and it looks like finally he's finding some form. You also had Emilio Grillo. I think he was 50 to 1. I've been betting him steadily. Also interested this week for him, uh, but just fell apart. I believe this was 16 or 17, where uh, just catastrophe when he uh, a pro shot stuck into the bunker there, had to come out to the right, chipped it over the green, chipped it short. I mean, it was just a disaster. I actually tweeted out, I think he had eight shots, had a triple bogey on a pretty gettable uh, birdie opportunity hole. So that killed Emiliano. And then, of course, going into Sunday, I had Scott Stallings. I had Keegan Bradley, I believe I even had someone else that was all up there in the top 10 and they all just fell apart. So that was the ending of my Sanderson Farms. Uh, did okay on a couple of DFS, like single entry things, but that was about it. All right, that's it for the recap. Let's uh, let's move on. And we are heading, of course, to Vegas, baby Vegas for the Shriners Open. And of course, they are playing at the TPC of Summerlin, also known as TPC Summit. has hosted this event since 2008, Fuzzy Zeller which really doesn't matter, was the consultant here. What does matter is it's a par 71, and it is playing over 7,255 yards. You got Bermuda rough and fairways. The rough coming in about two and a quarter inches, same as last year. And uh, they do have new greens here, so they shut the course down for about five months, and they replaced the A1, A4 bit grass with Dominator bent grass. Just a side note, uh, but should not affect anything in our analysis. Player field is 144, same as we saw at Sanderson Farms. That will be cut down to T65 and ties come, well, Friday late afternoon. Your historical cut line is two to six under. And in short, what you're going to hear probably a few times out of me is this is a scoring birdie fest. So this is a tournament that John Rahm would not want to pay, play in because it's a putting contest, short of it. Um, and over the last few years, it's always come down typically to a two or three man playoff. Patrick Cantlay owns this course. When you look at, you know, his finishes and whenever you put him on bent grass, watch out. He's always got a good chance to win. Uh, but your winning score last year was Sun JM 24 under. He had a book in rounds of a 63 round one and a 62 round four, um, which just kind of sealed the deal. Also, what reminded me of this tournament last year was I actually had one of my best, uh, finishes in the money for showdown finale i came in second which was i believe was like 15k at the time uh you had party marty laird who won at 23 under where he finally just learned how to putt because typically party marty laird can you know has distance off the tee pretty decent with the irons it's the short game and the putting and then uh that was a three-man playoff with austin cook who's you know been playing okay golf for his price tag for dfs pretty good value play uh i think i even threw a bet on him i think he's I don't know, 250 to 1, 500 to 1. We'll, we'll look at that. And then Matthew Wolf, who had back to back good finishes here, but we don't have to worry about him because he's on the live tour. And uh, then, of course, you had Kevin Na, who won back in 2020, just actually didn't do anything off the tee. His irons were okay. And I think he gained like 12 strokes with the putter. 
That's how he got there. Of course, Cantley was in that playoff, and then Bryson won uh, previously. You have some of the largest greens on tour next, I believe, Kapalua, uh, where they play the Tournament of uh, Champions, Century Tournament of Champions, at 7,400 yards, and there is a ton of undulation. So, you know, putter is definitely going to be something that is needed. You've got 92 sand bunkers, and you've got four water hazards, and water comes into play on all four of those holes. I've got lightning fast for greens from just past information. Uh, of course, defense, I mean, there's not a lot. It's a, you know, generous fairways, huge greens. The only thing really that could stop you here is if the wind starts blowing in the desert. And also you've got a lot of wasteland. So if you get off the beaten path of the fairways and get through the rough, you're into, you know, just, just sand and dirt. I mean, picture a desert with pine, I'm sorry, with uh, cactuses and, you know, gorse bushes, that kind of stuff. Uh, so you got to, you know, keep it at least in the fairway or rough to actually have approach. Um, I already mentioned the crazy greens. Pass notes, I already kind of mentioned, pass, you know, you just it's a scoring putting fest. Uh, and typically you can really do a simplified model for this. And it's all about irons and putting and, a, you know, it's all about the approach and the putt. And, of course, you need that person to have a super hot putter. All right, that's enough on the breakdown. I think you got it. To give you a quick little visual here. You can see, I believe, now I forgot, I don't know if this was 5 or 13, where you kind of drive it here and then you approach from over here. That's actually funny enough, Bryson way back. Uh, but they've got these kind of crevices or crevasses, whatever you want to call them, uh, that you can get in some issues. You can see where there is water. It is typically right around the green and pretty steep. If you go off, you're going to be in the water. Of course, you got the mountain views. It's, you know, it's a pretty track. I've actually never played it, but uh, if I go to Vegas, wouldn't be a bad thing to go check out. Or when I go to Vegas again, I should say. And then I brought this picture up just to give you an understanding. Again, if you, for whatever reason, have never seen this tournament, I'd have to guess if you are betting on golf at this point and doing DFS, you probably watch a bit. You can see what I was talking about. On you get out the fairway, you can get in some very auspicious, you know, behind rocks, cactuses, you know, these gorse bushes, whatever it is, uh, you can get in some issues. Uh, just to show real quick now, actually, it was funny. I was kind of looking this. So it was number three, actually, I was showing that picture where it has that crevasse in the middle. Um, but yeah, you can just see where they locate the water on 16, right in front of the green, par three on 17, uh, water along the fairway and well, a little bit of the fairway in green again on 12, you got water, but, uh, yeah, nothing major to point out. Just wanted to give you a quick show into the course map and you got a better understanding of the pictures to understand, you know, what you got in front of you from the course. All right, scorecard. Um, didn't see anything from a showdown kind of, hey, you should play guys going off 10. But you can see the backside is definitely the easier, as in the birdie opportunities versus the front. Gentle handshake right out of the gate. But then, you know, you kind of run into some longer par fours. There is some par threes here that are long. They are typically the defense of a lot of courses, especially on the fall swing tour, I've noticed. Um, that's really it. And I mentioned the weather and stuff. But other than that, there's nothing crazy. And I checked the current scorecard nothing's changed from distances on all these holes so we're good there so what am i looking at from a custom stat model now i told you guys and i'm going to show you something on here that i use for showdown um it's probably the best thing that you're going to see out of all this from a model analysis but of course has always created a custom stat model and what i've been doing over the years of doing this i just kind of keep slimming it down uh improving the models to see you know how it works out but of course, I already mentioned approach is king as usual, but really big time here. It's a putting contest. Now, this is the hard part. When you try to do analysis, you just don't know the guys that are going to have putts just fall for four days. It's just impossible. But we can see guys that have been putting well on bent over the last few tournaments. We'll look at that. Off the tee, you know, you got to have the birdie opportunities. If you're all in that dirt or sand, uh, you're not going to have the greatest approaches. So we still need guys to have some distance and hit the fairways, which is off the tee. Got to make birdies, got to make eagles, birdie or better. So it's pretty rare you guys see me add these things into the large model. That's it's just a score fest, and we got to get that in there to bring out the guys that can score. There is a couple procs to the pins that do show up here. Uh, very pretty short, the 100 to 125 at 14%, 125 to 150 at 17%. I already mentioned there's a couple par threes that can be a course defense coming in at 2 to 225. And then scrambling does show up here. Um, of course, as I mentioned, if you do get a little wayward, you know, you need to be able to get out as usual. All right. So if you're interested in the past winners that I mentioned with Bryson, Nah, you got Party Marty, and then also show the stats. 
what what comes up when you look at the analysis of the top five guys over the last few years? I've already mentioned this. It's all about approach and putting. Now, like Abraham Answer, for whatever reason, if his irons were off, he still got it done with the putter. But when it comes down to it, guys don't have to gain a ton. I mean, you've got the Bryson example. Um, you can look at Cantlay back here that gained a bunch off the team. Maybe he didn't do as much. And you could always do it different ways. But what we're looking for is a pattern. You know, what what is typically the guys that end up in the top five do? And for this course, I don't think you have to be that great off the tee. And you could see, you know, Party Mario Lair, you know, gained a little bit. You got Na, who lost a stroke off the tee, but did, a, like I said, actually gained 14 strokes with the putter. Uh, it was all done with the putter. Um, like I said, DeChambeau still gained seven strokes with the, you know, and didn't do a whole lot with the putter, but he did it all with the ball striking. And then we look at Sun JM, you know, what did he do well? Uh, when he won, it was approach and putting. Um, and that's where I'm going with. So you got to pick a lane. My lane is I'm looking for great iron players and great putters. I'm bent. All right. So with all that said, I took what I just showed you to custom stat. I created a recent form custom model. What is that? No filters on last six tournaments or 24 rounds against these weightings and these stroke gain uh, key indicators. So approach, I weighted 25%. So pretty heavily a quarter of the model off the tee at 10 putting at 20%. Typically don't do that, but it is very key here. Uh, I put birdies at 15. Birdie or better opportunities at five. Eagle, so a lot on the scoring. Got over 25% there. Those little procs of the pins, which I don't think is as crucial, but just to kind of enhance who does real well at these typical yardages coming in. Scrambling, and then uh, those couple par threes that are part of the defense. Plug that all in. Click solve, and you're going to get Grio. Funny enough, number one, because he actually has been putting pretty well as a late and everything else. So he's at 50 to one. A good thing is funny enough when I ran this, um, we finally got the odds in here. So you can see at least what the odds were on Monday. Uh, was when I, well, actually it was Tuesday when I pulled this. So, uh, and the guys that I bet, and I'll go through that. Uh, these did seem pretty accurate, at least from DraftKings Sportsbook. You got our buddy, Tom Kim, uh, who had a good showing at the President's Cup, come up second. Sun GM, another good President's Cupper, came in at third. Of course, past winner, you got Patrick Cantlay, Came in fourth, also just owns this course. You got the Canadian, Michael Glickick, and you got Ben Griffin, Cam Davis, who always scores well. Typically, I think the last time I said that, he always scores his cost, and I think he did not do that. I think he even missed a cut. But on average, Cam Davis does well um, in these kind of events. You got Mark Hubbard, who's been playing really good golf, had a great summer, had a nice showing. What led, I think, uh, the Sanderson Farms after Saturday going into Sunday morning. You got Mito Piera, Stefan Jaeger, Wise, who had a, a good show in here not too long ago. Taylor Moore, Detry, Pendereth, and Ja. You guessed it, huh? All right. This is the Horses for Courses. Who in the past uh, in this field has done very well at TPC Summerlin? You're going to notice over here that uh, you're going to have all kinds of different round inputs. But uh, I already mentioned Patrick Cantlay uh, coming in at 6-1, to one, you know, owns this place. You got Wise. Party Marty, Neesmith, M, so some past champions. Gary Woodland, Shank, Kazire. Funny enough, Pat, you know, my broke back guy uh, has done well here, but it's just been under recent form, has been terrible. Uh, you got Sam Ryder, who uh, also not a bad showdown play. Can have, uh, you know, he can birdie six holes and bogey seven, you know. Justin Suh, you got Ramey, who struggled at Sanderson Farms, but one thing that he does typically very well is putt. Uh, Adam Hadwin, Chesson Hanley, who I think is an interesting bet. Uh, you got Andrew Pat Putnam and uh, Ryan Palmer uh, coming at 75 to 1. Also, I like him, and we'll go into my betting card here shortly. All right, another way to look at horses for courses if you look at the past five tournaments played here, or the last five years, I should say, who's gained the most total strokes? So, this is off the tee, approach, around the green, and putting. A combined over the you know, last five years. Also, of course, you got to play here a bit. Uh, I already mentioned Patrick Cantlay, who, funny enough, did not play here last year. Uh, but one back in 2018 had a couple runner-ups and a T8. So by far, he owns almost double. Uh, you got Sun JM. You got uh, Party Marty, both past champions. Chesson Hadley, who I like from a betting side. The Shankster, uh, did I put a bet on him, but that's kind of interesting. Um, I, for whatever reason in my brain, I just think of Shank uh, on Bermuda Greens. Uh, you got Adam Hadwin. You got Bo Hosler, Neesmith, JJ Spawn. Good showing at Valero. Uh, well, won the Valero. Not a good showing, but won. You got Wise, Austin Cook, I already mentioned, Gary Woodland, my broke back guy there, Patty Gazire, Brian Harmon, um, you got the Hoagster, 
Diddy McCarthy and Putnam, and quite a few of these guys towards the end uh, typically get it done with the putter. All right, uh, because approach is king, I did bring up the Ironman kind of uh, slide or, you know, uh, information again. And so this one's just showing total approach. Who's been the best over the last six tournaments, 24 rounds? Tom Kim, Hubbard, Hodges, Hadley, Reeve, uh, Colm Terran, Pira, Grio, Harmon, Schenck, Neesmith, Kim, Michael Kim to be specific. Uh, Jaeger, Streelman, and Griffin. If you just want to know who's been firing with the irons. And then if we want to look specifically at that proximity 125 to 150 over the last six um, tournaments, 24 rounds, Troy Merritt, which is kind of interesting. I'll tell you right now, I had a bet on him. I think I pulled it because um, I was thinking of what he did at the Rocket Mortgage on Bent Greens and it was just kind of interesting to me. But the uh, more I started to dive into his form lately, I just said it wasn't even worth putting a 10 $20 on him. Um, you got uh, Austin Ekro just coming out the Corn Ferry. Of course, I believe what? He was a Texas guy. Um, might have that wrong, but it was a college star. You got Aaron Wise, Knox, Duffner, Wallace, Benny Martin, Lauer, Nicholas Linheim. You got Ho, Griffin, Blair, Hahn, Kim Davis. Again, this is looking at the past six tournaments that they've played, um, except for Ben Griffin and how they've done from this proximity 125 to 150. Okay, uh, one thing I already mentioned, the two things is irons and putting. So, of course, who is the best putter on bent? And I took a sample size of six tournaments, which, of course, can go back a ways, um, you know, depending on how much bent we played recently. We played a little bit of POA. Kind of had a, quite a mix over the last, you know, five or six tournaments. So, number one comes up Patrick Cantley, Sebez, Todd. So, that all makes sense. Bo Hosler. I think Austin Cook's interesting, um, again, with that. And, again, I'm always looking for the long shots that could might pop, especially in the fall season. You got Danny McCarthy, Justin Lauer, Norin, Rogers, English, McNeely, Herbert, Homa, Poston, and Putnam uh, are your top 15 putters out of this field when putting on bent. And then I had this slide from previous. I thought, you know what, or this information, I'm just going to throw it out there because Ricky Fowler is in the field um, and had, you know, what, I don't know, a T6 or something like that, had a good showing. But these are the guys that have gained the most with the putter uh, at TPC Summerlin since 2009 with a minimum of 10 rounds. And, of course, Brian Gay, which I believe is on the senior tour now or the champions tour, so don't worry about him. Cameron Smith's on live. You got Na on live, so really just broke back uh, has done very well here in Ricky Fowler. So most of this was, funny enough, I almost threw a bet on Ricky Fowler. I didn't do it, but from a DFS perspective, it might be a play that uh, we'll have to see where his ownership's coming in. All right, this is, I always tell you guys, I always highlight, hey, this is the one thing that I think is a, is a good list of players to look at. And I mentioned, you know, I built a small model that I just used real quick to look at some things for Showdown. And what is that? I rank birdies at 65%, eagles at 10, bogey avoidance, and birdie or better gained. That's the weighting. And when I plug that in against these guys over the past 36 rounds of golf they've played, so that'd be nine tournaments, it comes up Cantley, Davis, Kurt Kitayama, Grio, Tom Kim, Wise, M, Jaeger, Stefan Jaeger, Mito Piera, Moore, Penderis, Svensson, Mitchell, McNeely, Poston. And it's kind of funny. These are typically the guys, I mean, in this field that I would play and show down. So kind of also just makes sense they show up. If you want to look from an odds perspective, uh, Kirk Kitayama could be an interesting bet. You also got Stefan Jaeger uh, and Svensson. You know, if you want to get some of those big odds, if you, want, you know, I think it's nice that you got that there. But that is a player pool of 15 players I like. There's not one guy in here that I'm like, you know what, I would not play them. Killer Keith would probably be the one that I just wouldn't be super excited and maybe Taylor Pendrith just because of their putters lately. Um, that's about it. All right, comp courses. I, like I said, I don't I don't mind these. It's pretty simple. Just pick a bunch of TPC courses where they light it up, and that's your comparable courses. So that's like TPC Scottsdale. You got TPC Deer Run. You got TPC Craig Ranch, where I think, you know, what they've almost shot like 30 under there. And then funny enough, TPC Twin Cities. You know, not that that's a super score fest, but there's a lot of similarities. The, the Bent Greens. Um, I think that's actually a parse. Well, no, I think it's parse 71. It doesn't matter. Um, and of course, I plugged in TPC Summerlin where they're going to be playing. Take all that into effect. Look over the last 24 rounds against that larger model that I showed you in the beginning. And uh, again, just keeps coming to the top. Patrick Cantlay, Grio, Davis, Harmon, Pira, Ryan Moore. I actually put a bet on him. We'll look at my betting card again, I mentioned. But uh, kind of interesting that he popped here. 
uh, Gary Wooden. And that's what I like about the comp courses. The guys that you wouldn't automatically think about betting or playing from a DFS perspective, but typically fit a certain kind of track, which is a little more easier when you like look at, um, I don't know, like the RBC Heritage and of course, but you know, like tight tactical tracks, right? But this is more of who can go out and possibly be in a score fest and win. Uh, these are your guys uh, working up Hubbard, Palmer, Hadwin, M, Norin, Cebes. Funny enough, Blackbeard, Michael Thompson, that's kind of interesting column. Taron, Woodland, Ryan Moore. You know, that's why I pulled these courses. This is where scoring happens. There are some over here with the bent greens. Well, Scottsdale should be Bermuda. Uh, John Deere is bent. TPC Craig Ranch, I think, is actually is bent. Uh, I don't know why whenever I think of Texas, you should be uh, Bermuda greens, even in Vegas, but they are bent. So anyways, that's your comparable courses. And now let's talk about my betting card real quick. These and uh, one or two of these might have been eliminated, but you know, I told you guys early Monday morning, I do some real quick analysis and I start making my bets because I want to get if there's an uh, oopsie doopsie or they, you know, somehow put some high odds on guys, either odds are going to go down as money comes in. Um, I want to get my bets in early. So here you go. Uh, and if you see some really high odds, I've got probably, you know, five bucks, few bucks on it. So don't think, Hey, this guy's nuts. He's betting all like, like literally on Herman and Lander. I think I might've put a dollar. So, you know, it's all depending on what I really feel is a confidence factor on the dollars that I put in, but you got Grio 50 to one, you know, I don't feel super. And these are outright wins. Um, you know, he'd be probably a better top 10, top five. If you're more into like, Hey, I'll take the three to one. And, but I, I just bet typically outright. Tom Kim, I like that at 22 to 1. I think he could definitely, especially what, watching what he did in the President's Cup. Chesson Hadley is a long shot, Callum Turn. Justin Lauer just lit it up. You can see uh, out of this field, um, just in pure putting, not on a, a surface type, uh, he leads. And that's typically how he's been getting a lot of it done. Brian Harmon, 40 to 1. I like Austin Cook at 250. Sebez again, the putter. You're going to notice quite a few guys that putt. Ryan Moore, more of a plotter, um, but has had success on the comp courses. So I like that. Yeah, JT Poston, of course, we saw what he did at the John Deere, just lit it up, and a lot of comparables on some degrees. Uh, Denny McCarthy, actually, I always say this to you guys, and it hasn't come to fruition yet. I think I had Luke List at uh, where Max won at the, uh, Silverado. Uh, the Fortinet, I really liked the Luke List bet at like 100, whatever it was, 150 to 1. That didn't come, but, you know, we were in the right path. And then Luke List actually didn't play too bad uh, last weekend. But uh, my favorite bet probably is Denny McCarthy at 60 to 1. And uh, what I'm saying is, if you're going to make one bet um, and that's it, my preference would be Denny McCarthy at 60 to 1. I just think his game and everything he does, he could do it here. Uh, we've been And we've been waiting for him to break through and get that win uh, lately. Uh, the Hofster, this is a course that typically Charlie Hoffman will do well at. Um, you got Ryan Palmer. I like him too. Just, you know, typically it's just will the putter turn on? Bo Haas and uh, Landry, who in the past, you know, has been a decent putter. That's about all he had. And then Jim Herman, just, you know, I've seen it. Of course, he won at the Wyndham, which is also a scoring fest. Um, so why not? Okay, with that said, now we're going to go jump over into Fantasy National. I'm going to real quickly go through some DFS picks. Because I'm getting this show out late, I'm also going to give you ownership projections. We'll quickly talk about whether I'm going to wrap this up and get you guys out of here. Okay, so I've hopped over into Fantasy National. As always, we will be looking at DraftKings pricing, but of course you can use this. Uh, these picks for any any platform, just pricing is going to be a little different. I've got no filters turned on. I've already done some filtering to get to this point. And um, of course, as always, if you are betting or doing any kind of analysis for golf, you need to use Fantasy National. All right, this is going to be fast and furious, so hold tight. I've actually identified 23 people or 23 players that I'm interested in uh, from a DFS perspective. I'm also looking at this from a GPP perspective. What does that mean? I'm looking at the 100K uh, multi-entry, you know, 150 entry, you know, $20 per smack. Um, for, you know, you can use some of these guys from a cash game, but you know, some places when you're doing a large GPP, you got to be able to be a little contrarian or, you know, kind of go off zig when they're zagging that kind of thing. So, Right off the bat, Patrick Cantlay. There is no way possible, I tell you, not to play Patrick Cantlay here. But in a GPP environment, you can see actually the ownership's even higher than this when we get there. But uh, he's going to be super chalk. He's going to, you know, even though he's the top price, he's worth the value here. Um, I've already showed you what he's done when he has played here. But 
I think, you know, just as easy as his putter on Ben has been really good. Of course, it could go sideways. And so I will be, from a GPP perspective, not playing Patrick Cantlay. Maybe put a team in. It's all depending on how many teams you're putting together. But hypothetically, if you're putting five teams together and you actually are trying to win the 100K, if you play Patrick Cantlay, you're going to be like 30% of all the other teams. So anyways, moving on. Um, But I'm not telling you not to play him. I'm just telling you from a GPP perspective, uh, I'm going to pass. Max Homa. He's not on POA, you know, not, and he's been playing great golf. I mean, there's no reason also. But what I'm saying is I like this. I'd rather play a Max Homa, again, in a large GPP um, than play Cantlay and also get a $500 savings. But I'm actually the first person that I'd be plugging in if I'm, you know, Sun JM. You can also see my model rank. I've heavily uh, weighted so that I probably I didn't go over what you're seeing here, but mostly people have been watching me a while. This is a mini model. And the weight of this model is heavy on approach, putting, uh, and then the rest. So, I mean, I think it's almost like 60%, 70% is up here. You can also see the birdies here, right? We need a lot of green. We need guys to make a ton of birdies. You can see recent results and also tournament history. All right, that gives you an explanation of what the heck you're looking at here if you are new. All right, moving on, Max Home. But you can see he has not been making the birdies as much as we want. Also, recent form has been good the last couple. Uh, also had a nice President's Cup. And he's played here quite a bit and has struggled. Um, so hence the ownership. Also at times, Max Homa, though, I'll say this too. What's the last? The 20. I mean, Max Homa's game is just so much different. I, and I think this would be exactly when Max would do something. I mean, he's been playing amazing golf and the guy can score. All right, moving along. Sun JM, we already know past winner. He's also been playing, you know, look at look at what he's been doing from a recent form. Uh, T2 at the 3M, Wyndham, 12th at the FedEx, the BMW, which was the FedEx Cup playoff, and then T2. Uh, of course, past champion here, and I actually, funny enough, stated this um, last week with Burns having the ability. I mean, he was the elite class out of that field, and we have seen a bit of back-to-back winners, you know, uh, not a ton, but way more than we used to see. And so it wouldn't shock me if M uh, would pull off. If you want to know his splits, I'll click on it real quick, but typically M does his best work on Bermuda. You see that there, uh, but also positive across, but it's all going to come down to who has that great putter. All right, I got to move through this fast now, so get, hold on tight. Aaron Wise, like him, you can see on my model everything that he's doing. And the two things that I'm looking for here is the putting and approach. They need to be up there. Maybe not scoring as much, but I like, you know, that he's got that longer putter. It seems like it's been working better. And he's had a T8 here last year, so I don't mind the play at Wise. Uh, I'm a big fan of Tom Kim. You already saw that uh, I think this course should fit him very well. And of course, you know, with that win at Wyndham, you got to have a scoring fest, right? Remember, we went out and shot that quad. So he literally shot a quad on his first hole, four over, and then comes back and wins the thing. So if that guy can do that, uh, you can also see the guy makes a ton of birdies. So I could also see literally starting your build, and not to be a racist at all, but a lot of the Asians I'm a fan of uh, playing here. So just to put that out there, you could literally just put an all Asian build in and probably not to be too bad off. Taylor Montgomery, he's purely in here because uh, the guy just keeps showing me that even though from a ball striking perspective, he's brutal, but man, not brutal, but been very bad. But the guy is amazing, um, just keeps making putts from all over the place since his, you know, finishes. And, uh, you know, funny enough, we had a crazy hike in price for him because of that, but he's making a ton of birdies. So I can't tell you not to play him. I, again, any of these guys in the nines you could start with. Grio, you know, things would tell me typically that, but the, he's been putting really well and he's just a really good ball striker. So it's really hard to get off Grio. You can see number one ranked at my model and again, makes a ton of birdies. You can see kind of a mixed bag with tournament history, a couple, you know, nothing, nothing to write home about, put it that way. So you can make an argument that the, the, the putter goes back to what we know Grio's putter. Um, there could be an issue and, um, also, his course history, if you want to, you know, get away from Grio. Cam Davis, uh, also, the guy just makes eagles and birdies. Now, again, you know, if you go to building teams, uh, you know, probably you can put together more of a ball striking team, maybe not the greatest putters. I would put Cam and Grio in that box. But then you could also put together, like, a Montgomery, um, who else? Like a McCarthy, Justin Lauer. Like, you can put together, like, a better putting team um, is a good sign. Tom Hoagie, I like him at 9,000. He typically has done very well. He's also been playing really good golf. Uh, pretty good course history here. So a 14th, a 24th, a 7th. 
Um, he's not making the birdies like the rest of the guys, but I'm still interested in him. I would probably play him less out of the ones I've spoken to so far, but still interested in Hoagie and how well he's been doing with the irons. And, and also, you know, he gets very streaky even in his 18 hole round at what he does with the putter. I noticed Brian Harmon, I'm betting. Um, that's that Davis Riley is actually a withdraw. It doesn't come up here, but just so you know, he's withdraw. So I don't need to talk about him. You're going to see, I'm not picking Pendrith. I think I actually had a bet on him, but might've pulled that. Um, the guy's making, you know, so the last time he had his best showing was at the rock and mortgage. That was bank greens. And he was just getting within that. Like his irons were typically not that great, but he was getting in that his little hundred yard area, which just lighting it up. But you can see the putter is what kind of pulled me off from a DFS play. Siwoo Kim, I mean, I liked what I saw at the President's Cup. I told you I'm kind of, for whatever reason, just on the Asian tip uh, for this tournament. So I'm going to be playing some uh, some Siwoo from a DFS perspective. Uh, Dean Burmeister, you know, you can see he had a good show in there. And uh, funny enough, I think I even had a bet on him last week. But kind of like his game. That's, that's all I'm saying. I'm kind of just partial to what Dean has been doing. And so I might sprinkle him in. Denny McCarthy, um, funny enough. I am going to play him in DFS. I will click that. I don't know why that was unclicked, but uh, I think he's going to do great uh, here. I'd already told you 60 to one. I'm all over that bet. You can see he hasn't been performing that great, but this is where he could do it. Best showing here was a T ninth back in 2020. JT Poston, you know, he didn't have, he had a rough going at Sanderson Farm. So we're trying to think here. We got Sahith Tagala, which I was not on at all. I, I did not like him. I was shocked he did as well as he did at that at Sanderson Farms the previous year because I he just gets too way where the driver, which is like a McKenzie Hughes. Um, so I was on on Sahith, and, uh, but it was shocked me Poston uh, had that bad of a showing there. But this is a great place for him to get right, and his ownership right now, we'll check it out. It's pretty low. Sebez could be a good play. I liked him from a betting perspective. Uh, Mad McNeely, no thank you. Killer Keith, I already told you. You know, might come back to Hollywood, but it's just not where I, what the player that I'm kind of looking for. Ricky Fowler, I told you, could be interesting. You saw that he's done well in the past putting here. And uh, with that T6, his putter seems to come back a little bit. Uh, you got Mito, no reasons not to, but just not for me. Adam Hadwin, nope. I actually like Cage Lee quite a bit. Um, you can see, typically, of course, he's passed back-to-back champion TPC Craig Ranch. We know he can go low. And has he played here before? Yeah, yeah, T14 here. So, again, I like Lee. Uh, no, I just I don't think power can score low enough, uh, so I'm out on that. Taylor Moore, you can see, makes a lot of birdies and uh, is all fired on all cylinders, so I am excited about playing Taylor Moore for DFS. Cooch could surprise you. If that putter goes, watch out. Uh, what has he done here? Nah, nothing great. Neesmith, out of nowhere, uh, had a crazy, what he shot, 7-8 under on Sunday at Sanderson Farms. Had a good showing here. Something to think about. Could be a good play. Lucas Hebert. Herbert, I, I just say Heber now just because. Um, yeah, really not on the mind, even though it was in this tournament. I'll just tell you that right there. But he's had some good showings and can get it done with the putter. Can get really wayward with the driver, though. So Nick Harding, you know, funny enough, um, was kind of on and off with him in a showdown. And uh, the day I would play him, not so great. The day I wouldn't play him, he would just torch it. So there you go. Uh, Kurt Kitayama, back again. I told you, funny enough, for some reason the Asians kept just popping. Um, missed cut both times here, but I think he's a great play here. And, uh, yeah, I just like him. And you can see he's doing some things out of the realm that I'm not, but I just watched him get higher. I told you Ryan Palmer, I like from a betting perspective, Mark Hubbard. Uh, I think that's, that's a really good price. Uh, 7,400 might be, uh, probably one of the more chalkier guys when it says set or done. Um, cause like I said, I think he's been playing good golf and the guy can get hot with the putter. Gary Woodland can't putt. Yeah. Uh, Wyndham Clark. I don't know. He, it's just not the guy that I think I want to play here. Justin Saw, funny enough, I've got some uh, interest in. He hasn't been playing that great, but again, back, not again, with the Asian theme, it just seems like the guys, these guys can can make a ton of birdies um, and played here before, had a T8, so I kind of like that play. I'm going to kind of move through these guys because it's just no, no super interest. Stefan Jaeger, you know, we've seen that guy can shoot seven or eight under and around. That's the short of it. You know, been playing decent golf, played here three times. Had a T20 back then, but missed cut a other couple times. Svensson, no problem. I will probably end up playing him. He's not in there, but uh, also in showdown. He can, uh, it's the putter. His wife, I didn't make the top. Uh, Justin Lauer, again, I talked about what he's been doing with the putter. And that's just, again, that's kind of the guys that I'm looking for from a DFS perspective. 
Column Terran again just clicks my two boxes up here. Had a T13. Never played here, so I'm interested in him. Grace is sick. I don't have any problems with him, too. I mean, there's a lot of guys here that, you know, you can make arguments for. I just, you finally just got to make a stance on some guys. Uh, the Canadian Glitch, uh, for the price tag, I think he's been playing really good golf. He seems to make a ton of birdies. And uh, had a T27 here. So if you're looking for a cheap play, Cheston Hadley, another guy I think you should definitely look at playing. Uh, you can see he came up pretty high in my model, out of 150 guys, pretty much. And uh, James Hahn, uh, not too shabby, also here. Uh, typically, he can get in a scoring fest. It's typically the putter uh, that can let him down. But um, I think the last time that I, in my brain, when I think of Han, I think of TPC Scottsdale, where he fell apart in the last few holes um, for the waste management. And that was a couple of years ago. But uh, I've seen him since, you know, go in Fuego, 3M Open would be the last time he had a really good finish. Uh, Higo just had that good showing. Austin Acro just pulled him up just because he has been making quite a few birdies. Um, could be a cheap play at 68 that I might be interested in. The Hoffman, got a bet on him. Also could be an interesting play. Lipsky can also, you know, have his moments. I just had him highlight. I don't think I'm going to play Michael Kim, but I just this was pulling a lot of Corn Fairy stuff, so I'll just let you in on that. So probably out of all of them, I would probably unclick that. Shank I talked about from uh, Course History. Um, not a bad thought process, but just not doing the things that I've been looking for. I think that's it. I think I'm going to sum it up with that for you guys. Let's go look at ownership projection real fast. So I mentioned Cantley was going to be pretty chalky. It's looking like he's going to come in around 35%. Uh, M's going to be right up there. So you got these top three guys. Um, and then you got this next tier uh, between Montgomery, Grio, Pendrith, Homa. It's funny, this actually shifted a little bit. Homa was a lot less last time I looked. Um, and I updated this right before we got on. Cam Davis. I look at the plays that I've like interested in that are a little less. So you got Moore, Hoagie, Hubbard, Burmeister, Cage, Lee, uh, Kitayama. And then we're going to scroll down. I want to see if there's any names. Don't have to worry about Davis Riley. I mentioned he WD'd. Siwoo's down to 7% right now. I think the JT Poston is pretty interesting. And then what was one of my favorite value plays? I forgot what. He was actually shockingly. Oh, I think it was Hubbard. I was shocked he was that cheap. Ryan Palmer, I don't know why, I think could be very interesting. Acro. Peter Malnati, remember the Sanderson Farm, I told you guys was the putter. I think Hoffman um, could be pretty interesting in a GPP play. Jason Day at 7,200. I don't know, I just can't play Jason Day. I think everybody's just finally just had that point. Funny enough, Harry Hall was coming up uh, in some of the models and had, I think he had one decent finish here. Let's go look at him real fast. It was kind of odd when I plugged in and I'm like, why? Yeah, he had an eighth here back in 2021 and uh, had a pretty decent round with the putter, not with the irons. I don't know. I think I was looking at him to even possibly bet um, something on him. All right. That gives you a little understanding of ownership projections. Um. And then real quick weather, I looked. I didn't see anything. So you're going to want to pull up North Las Vegas Air Terminal. About the closest location here. And everything looks fine. And I have no idea why my temperature is coming in Celsius, but it is. Uh, but it's, I'm sure, going to be in the 80s, 90s. But nothing on the wind front that I see. So it's Vegas. All right, guys. Let's go uh, jump back and wrap this thing up. All right, so uh, real quick, thank you again for spending some time with me. I hope that gives you some more information than you had. I know I ran through a lot of information very fast, but I had to get this thing out and get it in your guys' hands. And so the longer the show is, the longer it is for me to do that. But I think it's everything pertinent. You've got uh, what I would stick to, again, is I like the uh, the model analysis for scoring leaders that I showed you. Um, and, you know, get, you know, go a little off base. I mean, again, this is if you're playing GPP from a DFS um, this is the time, if you think about it, when they play these kind of tracks that, you know, they're so easy, these kind of, you know, TPC Summerlin, it's an easy course for these guys. And if someone gets a hot putter, you could have a, a really crazy odds to win this thing. Now, don't get me wrong, the, the, the lead of the class is Sanjay Am and Patrick Kelly, but, you know, this is where I said, I think for the fall swing, you can get a little unique, especially in your betting and uh, from a DFS side. All right, like I said, you guys enjoy the tournament um, and, uh, of course, enjoy the football this weekend. And I will be back with you guys. I don't even have a clue what the next tournament is. I have not even looked. And I'll talk to you guys next week. Take care.